physical science. This is Mr. B, and for this video today we are going to wrap up section one. Remember the title of this section is forces. In our last video we learned about one of the most common forces that exists every day and that is friction. And in this video today we're going to introduce a second type of force uh, that is present Again, probably maybe even more than friction, and that is the force of gravity. So you all have heard of that before. So that's what we're going to take a look at today is gravity. And one of the big key questions here is how do gravity and air resistance affect a falling object? So that's going to kind of how we're going to wrap up the video. So that's going to um, all the information that we're going to go over now is going to kind of lead up to how um, gravity and air resistance apply to a falling object. So gravity causes objects to accelerate downward whereas air resistance acts in the direction opposite to the motion and therefore it's going to reduce the acceleration so again that'll make more sense towards the end of the video when we actually look at an example and see some pictures of a falling object but I would definitely write this down because this is kind of one of the big keys uh, to the last part of this section so I definitely make sure you have that jotted down in your notes uh, but before we can kind of make sense of this statement right here we kind of need to actually take a look at what gravity actually is for our official definition and again we've all seen and heard this word probably a thousand times in our life but now we're going to actually get a definition so I definitely write this down too um, that gravity is a force that acts between any two masses so any two masses can be affected by gravity and it is an attractive force and it can act over large distances so one of the kind of most classic examples is all the planets in our solar system uh, they orbit the Sun because there is a gravitational force between the Sun and all of the planets and that kind of makes sense with the attractive force because if we did not have that then we'd all probably just fly off into nothingness and we wouldn't really follow our set orbit so gravity um, again it plays a role in everyday life so that's just one example that I think probably makes sense to again the fact that it's an attractive force and it acts over large distances so that's what keeps all of our planets in orbit but it acts on a smaller scale as well but this is just I think a good way to introduce an official definition for gravity and then this one is kind of an example for just uh, kind of an everyday on earth not uh, floating around on other planets uh, example it says earth exerts an attractive downward force on this boulder so this boulder is attracted to the earth it wants to come down to the earth it's a constant attractive force there the supporting rock however underneath of here is exerting an upward fo upward force on the boulder and then therefore the forces are balanced and if you remember we learned that when the forces are balanced there's going to be no motion so this if the forces were not balanced this boulder would be tumbling over or shooting off into space which we know that that would not happen so the forces are balanced and that means that again there's no motion occurring this boulder is not going to fall again there's the downward force of gravity trying to pull it down to the earth and then the supporting force is being exerted from this rock right here and so now we're going to take a look again uh, kind of tying it back into the falling objects because that's kind of what they started off with so both gravity and air resistance will affect the motion of a falling object and as objects fall to the ground they accelerate and gain speed if you remember from our last chapter we learned that they accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared that's the force that gravity um, will exert on an object and the term kind of for this is something called terminal velocity and it is the constant velocity of a falling object when the force of air resistance equals the force of gravity so it's basically the fact that this is how fast something is going to fall it's going to fall at a constant speed and we call that uh, its terminal velocity so that's just basically a fancy way of saying that hey when the force of gravity is equal to the air resistance it's going to accelerate at this constant speed it's not just going to jump up really quickly or slow down all of a sudden we can predict it it's very predictable how objects are going to fall because this is the case for almost every falling object that we see that the force of gravity and air resistance kind of balance out and again we'll see a picture here in a second of what that actually looks like and just as another kind of real life example they talk about how this flying squirrel takes advantage of air resistance to slow its fall and increase the distance covered in a jump so this is um, again it's using its flaps there to kind of overcome the force of gravity that's pushing it down and therefore again flying squirrels don't really fly necessarily they glide and they just use the air resistance that's uh, pushing them up um, 
to cover more to cover more ground there. So that's um, again kind of an example of overcoming the force of gravity because if it didn't uh, fold its little arms out there, it'd probably go plummeting down to the ground, and it would not be a good day to be a flying squirrel. No so for our last little section here, it says talking about projectile uh, motion, and a projectile is just any object that's going to be thrown, so that's just kind of our term for our falling object is going to be a projectile, and we're going to see that they can follow a curved path sometimes. So uh, we're going to talk about what can cause it to follow a curved path rather than a straight path, and the combination of initial forward velocity and the downward vertical force of gravity causes the ball to follow a curved path. So again, uh, it'll make more sense once we actually see the picture. So when you throw a ball, it will follow a curved path. Uh, projectile motion is kind of describes that curved path. So this is another important term right here. It is the motion of a falling object or AKA a projectile. So anytime we have something uh, known as projectile, that's just another term for our falling object, after it has given an initial forward velocity. So air resistance and gravity are the only forces acting on a projectile. So for our example here, we have, um, these are two objects that do not have any extra initial forward velocity given to them. These are just objects that have been dropped. So they follow a straight line path and they have different masses and they're going to fall at the same rate. So then when we follow a curved path, so the red ball has just been dropped, however, the yellow ball has been given an initial forward velocity and so therefore it is following a curved path and you can thank Mrs. B for the music in the background if you can hear that but uh, we're gonna go over some examples of projectile motion in class and it's kinda one of those things that's harder to explain a little over a video so um, and let me know if you have any questions and enjoy this music for a little bit <laughs> 